Matt Verbila. Matt Verbila is an assistant professor of environmental engineering and director of the Safe Water Research Lab at San Diego State University, SDSU. His research, teaching, and service activities are related to water and wastewater treatment and the study of microbiology of engineered and natural water systems. Dr. Verbilla has a BS in civil engineering from Lafayette College and a master's and PhD in environmental engineering from the University of South Florida. Welcome, Dr. Verbilla. Thank you. Thank you. So my talk today is on pathogens and partitioning in resource recovery systems. Next. So wastewater treatment systems, we know, take sewage and produce a treated liquid effluent. However, they also produce a solid residual called sludge. Um, and when we talk about the flow of pathogens through a treatment system, oftentimes the focus is just on what the removal is between sewage and treated water, the liquid effluent. However, some pathogens have a greater affinity and attraction to the sludge. And if we were to consider the removal just from the liquid part, as in the difference between the sewage and the liquid effluent, compare that to the overall reduction, which is the difference between the sewage coming in and what's leaving in the liquids and the solids, the, the two calculations would produce different results next. So what causes pathogens to be more in the sludge versus more in the liquid? So some pathogens have a greater attraction to solids. They end up more in the sludge than they do in the liquid. And certain technologies have um, the need to, rem to remove sludge more frequently. Um, and certain tech wastewater treatment technologies also produce different types of sludge with different characteristics. And all of these factors affect whether or not pathogens end up in the liquid effluent or in the sludge. Next. So this is results from a study that our students did in collaboration with colleagues at um, University of Minas Gerais in Brazil at a research and training center in Belo Horizonte. This is a pilot scale sewage treatment system that uses anaerobic technologies combined with uh, algae based technologies for treating wastewater. Next. We measured the concentration of virus indicator, colophage, uh, in different points throughout this treatment system and found that the viruses had a low affinity to the solids and they were mostly found in the liquid effluent. Now, in contrast to that, other groups have reported that SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, has a potentially higher affinity to solids and is regularly detected at higher concentrations in the sludge. So, depending on which pathogen is of interest, they might be more prevalent in the liquid effluent or they might be more prevalent in the sludge. Next slide. So why is this important? It's because in some places, the sludge is actually more valuable to farmers than the liquid effluent in terms of resource recovery and using the resources in wastewater for food production. So here's an example of a project that we have in collaboration with the National Water and Sewerage Corporation in Uganda for a treatment system serving the city of Kampala, where the liquid effluent is discharged to a river and not reused, but the sludge is picked up by farmers and used for soil amendment to grow food crops in the region. Next slide. So our objective here to try to promote greater equity in terms of managing the safety of food, energy, and water systems is to open up access to scientific data. So the results pre presented previously 
from our study would normally be published in a journal article, which may only be accessible to other scientists and may be um, you know, not open access and may require um, a payment to, to, or a library subscription to obtain the data. So what we're doing through this project is producing a database that has all information about water pathogens that's open and accessible for anyone to use. And along, along with that database, we're producing a tool that practitioners can use to create meaningful outputs that can help them make decisions about resource recovery and um, safe reuse of water and biosolids from sludge. Next slide. So this is an example of that output for the system in Kampala, Uganda, where this system treats both sewage and fecal sludge from on-site sanitation technologies. And this is a chart that shows the prediction of how viruses flow through the system. So the viruses tend to end up more in the liquid effluent rather than the sludge and the biosolids. Next slide. Whereas other types of pathogens like helminth eggs, which cause um, diseases like intestinal parasites, uh, will tend to end up more in the sludge and biosolids. And even within those pathogen groups, there may be differences from one to another, like the example of viruses. Some viruses may tend to end up more in the sludge than others, while other viruses may end up more in the liquid. So if we compare the removal to the overall reduction, there's actually a big difference if we look at just the liquid effluent or if we look at the system in terms of the sludge and the biosolids as well. Next slide. So why do we care about this and how does this relate to global pandemics and COVID-19? So some pathogens, like I mentioned, are larger and or they have other properties which make them more likely to stick or to have an affinity to the solids. So some pathogens may end up more in the solids than they do in the liquids. Um, and some treatment technologies produce more sludge than others. Combined with that, sludge is more valuable than treated wastewater in some places. And the opposite is true in other places. The treated wastewater may be more valuable than the sludge for resource recovery. In terms of COVID-19 and the use of wastewater surveillance, um, SARS-CoV-2 concentrations in primary sludge have been used in, in several research studies throughout the world as um, the basis for wastewater-based epidemiology or wastewater-based surveillance. So understanding how pathogens partition between liquid and solids is important for using these types of methods to manage global pandemics. Next slide. That's all. So I want to appreciate the contributions from our students and from our colleagues for this work.